We made a Lowe's run to get lumber for the bond beam and a quick beat for the footings for the internal walls. That will be the supports for the, they'll be uh, supportive walls as well. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Copperline Rattler Ranch. I'm Julia. We've had some computer issues, so we didn't get a video out last week. We're going to try our darndest to get it out this week. It was more of a storage issue. Had too many things stored on it. We had to get an external hard drive and get that taken care of. So we think we're ready to go. So sorry about that, but we're kind of new to this kind of thing and didn't realize how much storage we were going to need on our computer. Anyway, in the meantime, we've been doing the cob underneath the bond beam on everything that's ready to go. Uh, I did it all on the outside. I still have to do the inside over here, the inside over here, inside the house, I mean. And then the south wall, we know we need to put probably about a half a dozen or so earth bags on there to bring it up. Otherwise, we're gonna be just putting too much cob in there. So we're gonna do that. Don has dry fit it several times to, just to make sure that we're correct in our, our plans. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put probably about a half dozen, six or eight bags over on that uh, south wall to bring it up high enough to make it a little less cob, not so much cob. Not that that would be a problem. It's just the curing, and we're in monsoon, so the curing takes a little bit longer, and we don't want to necessarily halt everything to let that uh, cob cure. I'm going to show you the north side. We do have to do some more bags on the north side as well, the north wall. Um, because we notice that there's a big slump uh, that we need to take care of in the bags to get it all level. Of course, once all the cob and stuff, the cob, the plaster, all the final work is done, you won't see any of these issues underneath that. We're not going to go for that lumpy, bumpy look. It may be a little bit lumpy, a little bit wavy, a little rustic looking, but we're not going to be able to see each individual course and each individual bag when we're done. It'll all be kind of blended in as much as we can or as much as we darn slice as much as we want to do. So I'm gonna give you a look at that north wall. We can take a look at see where we're gonna go with those bags. So as you can see, there's a pretty good gap right in this area here. So we're going to start on top of these bags here, get our barbed wire down, of course, and we're going to take this all the way over to about where that landing is um, to fill in these spots. You can kind of see where that slump down right in here. We've got a big slump we didn't really recognize uh, when we finished the wall. We've thought we were doing pretty well but when you put something flat up there you really see those big mistakes that you make so <clears throat> we're gonna get that all fixed and filled in and then we'll continue on with doing the cob in there plan on getting our wood and we're gonna hopefully we're hoping that the prices come down pretty soon because it is outrageous what this wood is costing we were paying I think $23 for each of these eight foot boards there's two by two by ten by eight at $23 each, we bought 20 boards to finish this part off. We're just kind of hesitating on getting more wood right now until we kind of see how much we're going to need and hoping that the prices start to come down a little bit because this is just getting outrageous. So anyway, that's where we're at today. We're going to do some more bagging today. Then we'll uh, finish up that cobbing in on the outside and on the inside of the house. And then we'll... What Don wants to do is really plan out where our beams are going to go. So he's going to mark, you know, we're going to do like a 16 inch on center because this is going to be an observation deck and we want it to be sturdy enough to hold people up there. Um, so he'll mark the boards where he plans to go, 16 inch on center, and, and we're going to estimate how many boards we need. Of course, get a few extra because there's always warpage, there's always breakage, mistakes, you know, you always want to be prepared for those kind of things. So. We'll get that done. We got to still pour our um, footings for the internal walls that will go between the bathroom and the bedroom, the bathroom and the living room, the living room and the bedroom. That, that wall will be pretty small. But anyway, we got to get that done, and that will be. Let me get you over there. Get this thing to work here. Over in this area, you can see these cleats. Those are going to be holding up the internal wall on 
to separate the bedroom from the bathroom. Same over here. These cleats right in here are going to separate the bathroom, which will be over here, from the living room, which will be over here. You will not be able to see these steps when we get finished with the plastering on the inside. That will be eliminated when we smooth everything out. So more bagging today, more sifting today, more of the same. We'll kind of show you what we're doing. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate that. Thanks. getting ready to mix a batch of cob. Um, our cob is sand, clay, and straw, water, everybody else's. We have plenty of sand in our soil, so I don't add any sand. I made that mistake when we did the outdoor kitchen, and we're having some big major cracks in that cob, but everything I've done so far with this mixture, um, without adding extra sand, because we are in Arizona and it's very sandy soil, um, has been working out really well. Of course, with the thin spots, as you've seen in some of the videos, it hasn't fallen off from wind, rain, things like that. So we're going to repair that as we go along. But right now I'm making the cob that we're putting underneath those bond beans. So getting my measurements ready. Everybody's formula is different. Everybody's area of the country is different. Of the world is different where they make uh, their cob. I'm going to be making it a little wetter than what you might see on for a... Um, actual cob only building that cob is usually a bit thicker because you don't want it to slump so this is going to be a little bit thinner than what you might see in kind of those videos every area has their own soil issues and every area every person is going to make their cob to what works best for them where they're at um, people like tiny shiny home they're going to be making their cob the best way that suits them. I know that I've watched some of their videos and they've said that they've had to actually bring in some clay. They don't have enough clay in their soil, so they have a friend who's bringing in clay for them. Um, Green Dream Project, their cob mixture is a little bit different from ours, even though they're just a few miles away from us. So they mix their cob in a different fashion than what we mix our cob. Because even just that few miles, the soil composition can be a little bit different and the needs can be different. And then of course your personal preference for what is gonna work for you and for your build is different. So we use a mixer, we've got it, it's working fine. I, I, I tried mixing it with my feet and with the tarp thing and that just is more energy than I wanna do. So anyway, that's what we're doing. I'm getting everything ready to go into the mixer and here's my formula for what works for me, for us here at Copper Line. I, the same buckets that we're using to fill our bags, and we do 10 of these with our soil, our sifted soil, sifted through a quarter inch screen um, per batch. And we do, this is just an old flower bucket that you would get when you get a tree at the nursery or whatever. And I fill that full of fluffy straw and I can compress to about half. And I feel that that's great for this part. Long straw right now, when we get down to the nitty gritty of the final um, cob, We'll use chopped saw, finely chopped saw, so, or saw, <laughs> finely chopped straw for that part. 
So I put my straw in this metal container, this metal trash can with the lid so that it doesn't get wet. And so I don't get mice in there. Yucky. Um, and then I just dropped the whole bale. It's just what I get at the feed store is compressed straw. So it's kind of tight. And then as I go through, I just shuffle it around and, and uh, break up those flakes or chips, whatever you want to call them. And then loosen it up enough to, to mix in well. So here we go. Put that little bit in there. This thing's kind of noisy, so I won't be able to talk to you while we're doing that. The amount of water that you add depends on a lot of factors. How dry your soil is that you're working with to start with, and also the humidity in the air. So we're in monsoon season, I may not have to add quite as much water as I would if we were in the middle of May when it's 110 degrees out here. But my soil that I'm using is very, very dry, so that's going to call for a bit more water. So it may actually end up being about the same. So I still need to add five more buckets of soil. We're going to let this mix for a little bit until it gets nice and mixed and gets all that straw coated heavily with the soil and the mud, basically.
so what Don is doing is he's going through and first he's putting the, the boards across the top of the walls uh, just to make sure we have you know the right amount of lumber up there and then he's putting a level on it and leveling each board individually and to each other all the way across and you can see that there's some gaps he's used some shims to raise that wood up in order to get things level so we start at what we believe is the highest point on that wall which was the north side of the west wall and work our way to the east side now what we're going what we're doing now is we're putting cob in those spaces in those empty spaces so I've got it worked pretty far on the inside before I got too late last night and we're gonna work finish that inside come out and do it on this side where we've decided we'll leave our shims in place and have them as structural element as well something else that he's also done is he has put um, a piece of rebar in each end of these boards to keep them from shifting while I'm doing the mud and we'll, we're gonna go ahead and do that all along the whole thing also we will put in more rebar on those uh, boards at kind of an angle like 45 degree opposing angles to, to just bond that beam to the structure itself. Those pieces of rebar will be about 16 inches long. The pieces we have in there right now are only maybe 12 inches long just to hold the boards in place while we do the mudding. But those 16 inch pieces are gonna go opposing angles and will help hold that beam, the bond beam, it will bond it to the wall. All that's gonna help structural integrity of that wall and, and make it even more solid and more monolithic. Once we're done with all that, we're going to go ahead and probably start on the concrete footing that will be for the internal walls. And those walls will also help support that roof in those long areas, those long stretches, like I told you in the other video. You know, we have the 39 foot um, stretch and then we have a 35 foot stretch. So, you know, basically the, the rafters will be from end to end on those, maybe a little bit inward so we can cover that with mud. So that's what we're working on. Let me take you along and show you. This is what it looks like on the west side. I'll take you inside and show you what I've done so far with the mudding and it's getting jammed as snugly as I can get it in there underneath to help support that bomb beam. Bomb beam. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how can this pile of mud hold this roof up. Well, it's going to harden to be like an adobe block, an adobe brick, once it's cured. So it'll be able to withstand that pressure. These bags here have already cured, nice and firm. The edges get a little crunchy, but that's just normal. And then on this batch of cob, I don't want it to be smooth because I want it to grab onto the next layer of copper. When we do our finish work. That will be cob without the long straw, it'll be with chop straw. And we're going to put a few additives. We'll put lime in it to help with weather resistance, water resistance. And in the bathroom, we're going to put boron, which is just common borax that you use for your laundry. I don't need that here, but that will help with mold and mildew resistance. So I'm packing it in here, trying not to disturb the level of these boards. That's kind of why he has the rebar in there. 
and not just shift it. all the way under. I'm incorporating those shims, like I said, with some added structural element. Just a messy job. It's a messy job. We finished adding the bags that we're going to add on the north wall. And Don is just finishing up putting the bond beam up there. He's got a couple more places that he needs to add the rebar that will hold it in place for now. And then we'll move on to the last south wall that we need to add a few extra bags to. So that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please um, like this video, share it subscribe. Comment below if you have any comments or questions. We try to read those. And please, no ugly websites again. That one last week was just ridiculous. So be mindful, be kind. If your intentions are not good, don't be doing that to people's videos, please. 